all right welcome back to courses as no podcast now i hope this works because the first one didn't work how are you guys doing good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in all parts of the world thank you for uh, supporting courses as no podcast smash the like button get your subscriptions in we're going to be digesting through Michael Artete's words after the Arsenal four leads to what a performance um I had some negatives on it but generally it was a good performance I think preparing for Benfica a, a, a tie that I've already said we are not going to win it um we are not going to go through but of course that was a very very good message to Benfica and of course a vital win in, in in terms of confidence we're going to be looking at that we're going to be seeing what Mikel Arteta said about Martin Odegaard um how impressed was he and how impressed were you VAR overturning that penalty decision against Bukayo Saka we considered the same penalty 14 days ago against Wilhelm's William Jose and then VAR said it was a penalty and a red card yesterday when we we're playing Leeds VAR said it wasn't a penalty no yellow card you know it's crazy isn't it and, and and so many people are actually going out there saying football is corrupt VAR is corrupt referees up you know are corrupt but anyway anyway um for me i want to see what michael Atta said about that um but obviously i want to get the injury update about thomas party and kian tian i'm just tired of cedric playing in that left back because there are so many things we don't get as a team when actually uh, i plays as a left back we don't get a lot of um quality going forward so smash like button and let us try to digest through Mikel Arteta's press conference yesterday at the Emirates Stadium of course the first question he was asked was um uh, from Kai Kainak and he was asked about the penalty overruled by VR and said I was looking on the TV and I thought it was a clear penalty um and considering the penalties uh, and considering the penalties we've been given against I thought it's going to be a penalty probably a red card because um it's the same decision against us of course this is in the Wolves game like I said and I said it didn't mean to be um it didn't mean to be so um I don't know I think we have uh, we we have some clarification there if possible and, and the truth is VAR is just spoiling football look at mike dean's you know performances against uh, against southampton that penalty overturned against arsenal and then a penalty given against when uh, uh, against william jose um you know when we are versing wolves what does it mean i mean the same incidences different penalties different punishments it, it it really doesn't make sense it really really doesn't make sense but of course um Nikola said would you know wouldn't want to attack VAR he wouldn't want to attack the referees but for me in my opinion I think it was a you know it, it was a part where VAR referees had to pay off their debt to Arsenal because that wasn't a penalty against Wolves if, if this is not a penalty then that wasn't a penalty there was no clear intention that the player wanted to win the ball he was so far away from winning the ball and it's not a penalty now against David Louis David Louis is running behind William Jose and there is no intention of getting the ball but his knee actually clicks onto the boot of William Jose and it's a penalty and a red card you know and and and, and the FSA says the red card was not to be overturned that is how crazy it was and of course Michelata says they need some clarification I think you know the best way to deal with VAR for me I've, I've already said it and I said it again if you can't kick it out of football at least take a you know take a break put it off football for for, for, for what for, for one season make sure it is okay it's either we should let the tv the, the, the referee go to the tv often than having a fourth official in the var room because they're just making so many mistakes they're just making they're just frustrating football you know i would rather have a handball than the, you know that a referee has not seen than having a handball that actually var has seen but doesn't know what to say and then it, you know it, it decides wrongly because the, the, you know what people think is that var is all-knowing var is is there to bring the perfection to football and, and it's not happening actually it is it is the opposite you know everybody says it's a penalty and then VAR says it's not a penalty and when everybody says no that's not a penalty vera says that's a penalty 
it's ridiculous so ridiculous and i know uh, many arsenal fans are still fuming about that but of course um ateta did talk about the improved in, uh, improved creativity yesterday and he said i think um we are much more efficient and more composed we took our time when it was needed our decision making was much better and i cannot actually disagree i've seen um i saw a couple of chances um Kaiosaka getting um slightly slightly caught offside that would have been a very very fantastic team goal um uh, also struck the post i think in the second half um of course i know he was looking for that angle uh, where the goalkeeper absolutely had no chance but of course he was um, a bit unlucky you know he could have scored four um against leeds of course he got his hat trick and, and, and atet has been uh, did speak about that as well but i think yeah we have improved much when it comes to creating these opportunities now what actually is happening is we cannot score the opportunities you know it, it's crazy when we didn't have the opportunities, at least we could score a few goals. Now, we can't convert. And, and, and that's the problem. Uh, and I've already said it. Lacazette and Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, either one of them starts to score those goals or we actually get rid of both of them and get in players that can score. But of course, I think Atta needs to work on that. You can't create chances if you can't score them uh, and you can't score if you don't create chances. So uh, as he works on the creativity, he also, have to work to, 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 he also has to work on the uh final product uh sp speaking about pl emrick abameyang he said he set the tone uh, for the team up top and i'm delighted uh for him on saka he said he's doing really really well he can get much better he's got um he's got the intelligence and the desire um I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm i'm just going to be a little bit honest i didn't i, I didn't think saka was going to be this good last season um so many people saw a lot of uh, potential in him i didn't I, look he was playing in this left back and I was really fed up of the Unai Emery um, regime, I think, and everything was so bad for me. But I think he's really proven me wrong. He's, he's this kind of very good player. He's played on the right wing. He's played on the left wing. And I think, actually, it would be very, you know, very good if he plays on the right wing and Pepe plays on the left wing. Because I think Pepe delivers more when he's playing on the left. Saka delivers more when he's playing on the right. So I think in the next season, that should be our lineup. Pepe on the left, Saka on the right. I think that will actually work for us. But of course, um, I, I, I cannot disagree with Mikel Arteta. He's been so, so brilliant this season. The assists, the goals, the, you know, of course, the, that penalty um, did come from him. We, we, we should have got two penalties. They should have considered two penalties. Uh, but that was unlucky for Arsenal. Um, Ateta reacts to uh, Leeds. He said, Mikel, uh, of course, this is from Sky. Um, and Mikel Ateta was saying that if, um, if there is a team in the Premier League who are never going to give up is Leeds, Mikel Ateta was thrilled um, with how Arsenal held off um, a second half fight back against Leeds. And, 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 and for me, I don't think I was thrilled. And these are the negatives I was talking about. These are the you know, bad things I was talking about in that game. There is no way you're leading 4 0 in 47 minutes, and then in this, you know, by 70, it is 4 2. I mean, you're giving them a chance to fight back. They are fighting back and they are coming back in the game. And for me, I didn't agree with it, you know, with, with that, and I didn't love it. I think if you're playing a team like Leeds and you're 4 0 up, it's your game. I mean, you've got to do whatever it takes to show them that it is your show and you're going to do whatever it takes, you know just to seal them off. It should have been 6 now. We've seen United, you know, throw up them 6 now because United is always hungry. They have, they, they, they have, they have, they slapped Southampton nine goals to nail. And, and, and the fact was, if you're 4-0 up, the team is broken. Your opponent is broken. You've got to break them. And, and, and that's my problem with Arsenal. When we were leading Wolves 1-0, we slept off and they overturned the result. Against Aston Villa, somehow within two seconds and two minutes and two seconds we are sleeping and they get this you know the little win now we also sleep against um leeds and they almost got a result in that game which was actually for me um ridiculous but of course um you'll find some player ratings here on on, on football to london uh, i won't be able to provide football um player ratings but of course they did provide so you can actually find them i'll share a link in the description of this video uh, Oteta on Odegaard's first performance, he did say that big credit to him to play first Premier League um, start against Leeds after not playing much football in the last three months. Uh, tr uh, months to run away, uh, to run the way he did, how comfortable and how creative he was on the ball, and the personality showed 
on the game it was great of course i'll talk about martin odegaard when um he gets something like five performances six performances in uh, then i'll actually talk about uh, much of his uh, performances uh, on abameyang he did say that um yeah i think sometimes you have to change the way you shoot and i think the goalkeeper was expecting me to shoot um on his left but i changed a little bit and it was a good goal of course that is abameyang um interviewed by sky you know what's funny when 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 we lose abameyang never goes for interviews but when we win actually you know he's the man he is your man on interviews and of course he said um i think he scored the same goal against newcastle this season um but it was i mean carlo dalo thinking that he's going to go on the left and low and then he actually goes on the right um and high so but he's a prolific goal scorer. Everybody knows that um pierre Emerick abameyang give him the right space give him the right tools give him the right everything he's the right man he's the right striker uh, to get those goals in um and of course obama young did de de uh, dedicate his um hat trick to arsenal fans and he said everyone has given me a lot of love i'm really proud to be part of this family pl emrick obama young dedicates his first premier league hat trick to arsenal fans for their support in the recent weeks it was a good hat trick by the way apart from the penalty because i don't really treasure penalties but um i think the rest of the goals were actually well worked goals very good especially the first one um i think it was a, a, a typical pl emerick abameyang goal um of course abameyang speaking on his hat trick he did say that um pl emerick um uh he did say that for sure it means a lot to me i'm a guy who always works hard and tries to give the best for my first uh for for my for, for, for first my family and team as well it's been a tough time for me but now it's time to get a smile back and win games and score goals yeah i agree i think you know when you're a striker and you have this kind of drought everybody thinks you're finished especially when you're in your 30s like a bamiang you're, you're finished you're not coming back but when you score a hat trick and 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 for me why, why i think a bamiang still has a chance the, the leading five top scorers in europe a 30 and above, Messi, Ronaldo, uh, Lewandowski, of course, Aubameyang is among them. You know, there is no question about that. Um, behind Kun Aguero, for me, I think he's the, the second prolific goal scorer um, in the Premier League, then followed by Harry Kane. Or you can change the order um, like you want, but uh, Aubameyang is one of the three best goal scorers or goal poachers um, in the Premier League. So I think... He still has a chance he's not all uh, the way arsenal play is not you know, he's not going to get overworked we don't you know, actually make him run so much i think he's going to get that ball on his plate and you know uh he does his things so i i don't think there's going to be anything um to limit pl emrick abameyang from scoring goals at arsenal so that is um nikel Arteta's press conference um he was speaking about so many things and of course abameyang asked about his form and uh, and his hat trick we didn't get uh, um, uh, um, an update about Thomas Partey. We didn't get uh, an update about Kentiani. I was expecting that. But of course, like I said, at times journalists ask questions we do not want to hear. And they leave questions we want to hear. But of course, you know, I think we'll be talking to Mikel Arteta on Tuesday, tomorrow, um, ahead of the Benfica clash. So basically, that's when we, we are going to know, will Tiani play? Will Partey be back? But I don't expect uh, Partey to be back, but I expect Kentiani uh, to be back there so what did you make of that performance against Leeds it was for me um a very 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 energetic one very energetic one four goals to two you know it's 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 a bounce back we didn't expect Leeds is a very hard opponent they are they, they are the most hard working team in the Premier League they are they have a good manager they have a good squad they have a lot of cohesion between them but you know the way we crush them the, the way we smash them it brings a lot of confidence and reliance in the squad. But the question is, do we draw on that win? Can we draw on that win? If we cannot draw on the Leeds, you know, on the Leeds win, then it doesn't mean anything. But if we can draw uh, on that win, of course, the games coming are not very easy. You have Benfica in Rome, and then you have Manchester City away from home. So um, they're going to be very, very hard games. City is absolutely on fire, um, especially if you name two names. Phil Ford and, 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 and Ike Gundogan, they are absolutely blazing, aren't they? Um, of course, they destroyed Tottenham Spa. They have, they have just destroyed Liverpool, and they expect to destroy us. We shall be very tired from Europa League football, but I know we stand a chance to beat Manchester City um, over the weekend. I'll talk about that in the match preview. Have <laughs>